in this video I'll be talking about what is known as the autoregressive time series model in the previous video we learned about the moving average models uh, well the autoregressive models are uh, you know different kind of models similar to the uh, uh, moving average models which can be used for time series forecasting this video is purely on the theory of autoregressive models in short we call it as air model in a separate video we'll we'll talk about how to use uh, the autoregressive model to actually forecast your data as i said it's uh, known as the air model an autoregressive model is meant where the current value of a variable uh, say for example the variable is y uh, depends uh, upon only the values uh, of that variable uh, you know the values that the variable uh, took in previous periods uh, and and there is an error term so uh, this is how uh, an autoregressive model look like in mathematical form so say for example yt our uh, yt is our data series yt depends on the previous value of yt so yt minus 1 yt minus 2 up to yt minus uh, p and there is an uh, error term or a disturbance term i'll talk about each one of them uh, you know explain about it uh, yt as i said is the um, value of the uh, variable y for which we want to you know do the forecasting or prediction at the time period t okay so t is the current time period so yt depends on yt minus 1 so the uh, previous time period yt minus 2 previous to that time period and it goes down and down and further to uh, t minus p what is ut ut is nothing but the error term or it's also known as the disturbance term uh, the property of ut is that ut is a white noise so what is a white noise uh, white noise is a case where uh, the mean is zero and the uh, the uh, uh, variance is constant here uh, so this is a white noise disturbance term and there are uh, different lags in the model so that's how we predict the future value of yt based on the previous values of yt okay so that's about the ar model uh, in a more um, you know concise form we write it in this way so yt is nothing but a constant term and then the lag values and then your error term or the disturbance term so uh, this is a arp model so ar model with the uh, you know the parameter as p oh, sorry not the parameter it's called the order the order uh, as p because there are p lags you know this is the first lag second lag till the p lags so there are p lags of the same variable yt we are using in the model hence we call it as a arp model if we are using only yt minus 1 for the prediction then it's a ar1 model if you are using only t minus 1 and t minus 2 only 2 lags then we call it as ar2 model so that's how we name the uh, autoregressive model. So primarily, uh, just to summarize, uh, you know, primarily AR model is a model which depends on the previous value of the same data series. Okay. Uh, we have a data series, say for example, we have a stock price for today. So, uh, and then we have got stock price for last 30 days. So that is my series so uh, i'll write stock price for today depends on stock price for yesterday uh, day before yesterday and day before yesterday of yesterday and so on it will go on so obviously uh, the uh, the dependency will go down as you you know uh, go down the uh, time i mean if you keep on decreasing uh, if you keep on increasing the uh, lags the dependency of today's price will go down and that's where we need the concept of stationarity it's a very important 
and desirable uh, property uh, of AR model which requires that the uh, series is stationary. Uh, the uh, series for which we are doing forecasting should be a stationary series. Otherwise, uh, the forecasting is not, uh, you know, possible. The non-stationary series has some problems. We'll see why a non-stationary series is uh, is something that creates problem for uh, the AR model. Uh, and in a separate lecture, lecture we will uh, uh, see uh, how to actually forecast a non-stationary series or how to make a non-stationary series to a stationary series and then use AR model. Well, I'll take a AR1 model, so yt equal to theta1, which is a parameter, and then yt minus 1 plus the disturbance term. I'm assuming this is a zero mean uh, series where I don't have the constant term. So there is no mu here. This is an assumption. Okay. We, we can we can possibly have such a model. Well, I can write the yt minus 1 like this. Again, another AR model, AR1 model yt minus 1 equal to theta 2 yt minus 2 plus uh, the disturbance term ut minus 1 okay and then i can further write yt, yt minus 2 in terms of yt minus 3 and then yt minus 3 at minus 3 in terms of uh, yt minus 4 and so on this will go on so what it says is that you can actually put the yt minus 1 value in this particular equation and uh, you know um, and we will see a, an interesting thing so yt I'm, instead of yt minus 1 I am putting uh, this equation I am putting it here so what I get is theta 1 theta 2 which are the coefficients for the lags yt minus 2 plus theta 1 ut minus 1 ut1 and if you put the value for theta yt minus 2 in terms of yt minus 3, you will get another disturbance term ut minus 2. So this will go on. Okay. So what it means is that our series of yt is a combination of lot of error terms. Okay. And we expect that the uh, theta values should be uh, should go down as we you know go down the uh, uh, the time series or if it's not clear let me just uh, you know uh, let me just uh, explain it to you here only so yt uh, is a function of yt minus 1 so naturally what we expect is that the current value of uh, a series depends on the immediate uh, past values. So the dependency of yt with yt minus 2 should be should be less than the dependency between yt and yt minus 1 or in other words yt is more correlated or more dependent on yt minus 1 than yt minus 2. Right. So as you increase the lag uh, the uh, dependency uh, goes down. So that's what it means. Or in graphical forms, yt depends more on theta 1, which is the parameter for yt minus 1. And then it goes down with theta 2, which is a parameter for yt minus 2. And it goes down gradually and it converges. In mathematical term, we will call it as converges or it goes down to 0. So that is the property of a stationary series. If this property is not, you know, if this property is not there or it's validating, then this will be a problem for AR model because this will be very inconsistent with the form. And this series, the time series of AR model will never convert. We will never be able to uh, estimate theta 1, theta 2 properly. These estimates are going to be the biased estimates. So to estimate theta 1, theta 2 and theta up to theta p, it's important that the air, uh, you know, the, the air uh, time series is stationary in nature. So that is a very strict criteria 
for the air model uh, so you know before we actually do the uh, forecasting using air model we ensure that the time series is stationary if it's not stationary then we make it stationary and use the air model in a separate video i'll talk about how to make a non-stationary series into a stationary series thank you